What's up guys? We are jumping into a new wave of Super 7 Ultimates. We're taking a look at Power Rangers Wave 2 and we're starting with a monster. And we're starting with one of the, I guess, the more memorable monsters, one of the more classic monsters from MMPR. We're taking a look at King Sphinx. I'm really excited to take a look at this one. By all accounts, it looks like it could be one of the best ultimates of the year and will likely be blowing the Hasbro figure right out of the water, and which is what I'm hoping for. So we've got him here in our standard ultimate style package. You've got your, your badge for your, for your bad guys on the front, and then of course you've got your green with lightning bolt, all the energy around it. You've got your Power Rangers logo on the back. Pop that slip cover off, of course, and you've got your figure there in the big window. You've got your classic lightning bolts wrapping around the side, and then the back of the package has got some gold foil. You've got a bio, and then you've got a shot of the actual suit, the actual monster from the show. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go out of the package, our ultimate King Sphinx, maybe, maybe the best ultimates this year. I'm pretty hard pressed to actually think of one that I like better after this in just about every way. Like this guy has just about every single good thing going for it. So even if you didn't like this character or anything like that, you might still enjoy this figure just based on the merits of, of how it's been done. It's really, really good stuff from a sculpt, a paint perspective, and articulation on this guy in many ways has a lot of the things I've been complaining about fixed. So that's pretty exciting too. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. He's not perfect. There are some hindrances on this figure. One is an odd one, but overwhelmingly he moves really well. So to start with, we do have our head. And as you can imagine, big Egyptian style headdress, it's gonna be locked down. But the head is able to shimmy forward and backward in such a way that it makes it look like he's sort of like being able to look down or slightly look up. You can't really do a whole lot more than that, but it does help. You do have a little bit of tilt depending on it, you know, if you get that headdress cocked just the right way, and then you can swivel it also. Not super far, but enough. Arms are the area, there I just did it, that are concerning because if you push them just slightly too far, they will pop right out and they go, they go to there. That is where they will stop. And if you do it just far enough, the sculpt will actually sort of pry the arm out. The joint itself still has a little bit of room left, but you can't do anything with it. So that's, that's odd. It's not a hugest deal, but it's weird. You can swivel at the shoulder. You've got a bicep swivel. We've got single jointed elbows, not 90 degrees, maybe about 80-ish. And then you've got hinges and you've got rotation at the wrist. The wrists are actually really thick and they go super deep into the, into the arm. So you don't actually see the joint, which I do kind of like. It almost made it seem like there wasn't one there. Now, as far as the torso, this is where things get pretty cool because, you know, one of my big complaints with Ultimates is that figures don't have any, well, most figures don't have any real ab articulation, but he has a ton. Like, he has so, so much, like, so much more than just about any other figure. It's really weird. He also has a waist twist down here, too. You've got a little bit of shimmy, but it's not enough to really worry about it. But you do have two points of swivel at the torso, at this diaphragm cut, and at the waist. If there's one thing to say about it, it's that it's maybe a little bit loose, but I haven't really had any problems with it either. Get him to stand just fine. The wings are, of course, uh, going to play a factor with that weight distribution, but I'm, I'm really happy to see this. Like, that's a big step forward. Legs go out about all the way. It's not the full splits, but it's really good for these, like, tree trunk legs. They kick forward. Not much back. You've got your thigh twist. Got single jointed knees, of course. They're basically 90, and they do swivel a little bit because it's a peg. And then you've got really, really nice rocker down here, as well as really good hinge at those ankles. So good, good articulation overall with this figure. You also get a couple extra things, of course, because he has wings and a tail. So these wings will go into the back. It's just a, it's just a peg with a hinge, and it swivels this far, and then it rotates. They're in there really good too. I don't have any any worry that they're gonna fall out right now. And then you've got the same thing, a swivel and a hinge at the tail, which you know is fine. That's all I really need. I don't need anything else with this guy. I think he moves exceptionally well though. You know, in the confines of Ultimates, there's always gonna be some imposed limitations with the single joints, but I can live with that. The one thing I've been complaining about for a while on figures is either a non-functioning ab articulation or none at all. And this guy has, you know, the exact opposite. He moves incredibly well there. Great range. Really, really nice posability. Even more so than how this figure moves, I think the way he looks is tremendous. I'm really, really happy with this. There's so, so much difference in this figure than the Lightning Collection. And, you know, we'll do a comparison to that one uh, here shortly. But this figure is so, so more heavily painted than a lot of other Ultimates as well. 
And one of the key things that, that I can't stop noticing on this figure is how much it looks like a suit. And, and I, don't, I don't know if that's always going to be the goal with some of this, with this line or not. It's not necessarily looking like a monster to me. I mean, obviously it is, but this looks like a suit. There's a, like a softness to it almost, which, which I don't know if that's the best word to use, but there's a softness to me about the, some of this sculpt in the musculature that looks like it was fabric or something. Like, I feel like there's some, some in-depth research on staring at the suit uh, and the, you know, the imagery from the show to get this right. And I'm very happy with this. It doesn't just look like a Sphinx man. This looks like, you know, a Sentai monster shrunk down, which I'm really happy with. There is a ton of paint on it, tons of shading. It's not a lot of intricate paint overall, but there is some, and there is a lot of shading in general in this figure. You've got that sort of blue hue in places, and then you've got that very, you know, concrete look on him around the shading on the uh, on the mo on the musculature and then at the you know at the seams basically of what would be parts of the suit you do have all of this egyptian hieroglyph uh, sort of relief sculpt on the torso and on the uh, the waist piece down here and it's all painted the eye is painted you know all the stuff that we saw on the, on the lightning collection figure that just wasn't painted so this brings out a different level of detail it adds a different set of colors so it makes the the chest pop a little bit Everything on this figure just seems so, so much more well done to me uh, than the Hasbro offering. The wings are, of course, a huge facet of this guy. It's a Sphinx, so of course. And maybe, maybe these wings are a little bit too bright because, you know, you can go back and watch the show and this, this thing is dingy looking. But I'm so happy that these wings are painted in comparison, again, to the Lightning Collection. Tons of paint. Like, if, if you look at this, there's probably more paint in this guy's wings than on some other entire Ultimates figures. This guy is is just covered uh, from head to toe, and those wings are a big example. The one thing that I don't remember is what the wings looked like on the back. They have like a red splattering all over the back here. I don't know, I don't really care. The front of the wings, or I guess that's the underside of the wings, uh, are really what matters, and they look tremendous. This just adds another pop of color. And then of course you do have the tail back here, which even has paint on it as well. So this guy is just covered, the sculpt is great, and again, it's not to me looking like this sort of monster man, a sphinx monster. This looks like a suit. And to me, that is what we should be looking for in Ultimates. The, the Zords very much look like that, and I would love to see more of this, because it feels like it feels like something really is jumping out of the show with this one for me. And the head also kind of seals that as well. He maybe looks a touch happy to me in this particular uh, sculpt, but overall, this again is much, much more in line with the actual suit and what the monster looked like in the show than what we got from Hasbro. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna scream about the Hasbro stuff too much, but it's, it's a huge, huge comparison between the two. They, they seem to be going for different things. The Hasbro going for King Sphinx as a monster, and this guy being used as a representation of the actual suit in the show. And whether that's what it is or not, it's what it seems to me, and this head is a really good indicator of that, along with the rest of the figure. It, it just looks tremendous. Now, as far as comparisons go, let's start with some other King Sphinx figures. So we've got our Ultimates here in the middle. We've got the original vintage Bandai uh, here on the left, and this is the actual one I had as a kid. And then this is our Lightning Collection here on the right. And they're obviously all very, very different. It's interesting to look at the Ultimates and the Bandai next to each other. I can sort of see a lot more similarities between those two than the Lightning Collection. Something about the overall build and the sooty looking nature of these figures, but there's still a lot that's different. All of the details are fully painted on the Ultimates figure in comparison to the Bandai, although it still looks pretty solid despite having very bad articulation for, you know, now. And then we've got our Lightning Collection figure here on the right, and there's like all the things that are wrong on that figure are fixed on this one for me. So all of the raised detail being painted, the wings having paint on them. Again, I think the wings maybe are a little too clean, but the wings being painted are a big thing. Uh, having just different colors, more shading, a lot more shading in particular. And then of course, the big thing for this guy was his lack of face paint, nose, the mouth, all that stuff. It makes him look like he just has this sort of pale gray void. They're, they're all very similar in size though, surprisingly. There is some variance, you know, the Ultimates is probably the biggest overall, but they're still pretty close no matter what. I will not in any way really listen to any argument that this is not the better figure though. It's just a night and day difference between the Hasbro and the Super 7. Now let's do some other Ultimates. Let's do Rangers. Of course, let's do Rangers. So let's take King Sphinx aside and there is an Ultimates Ranger. There's our Tommy. Let's, let's take King Sphinx aside again and we'll do Goldar. 
since these two are definitely going to go together when it comes to a display. And I think this looks pretty good. King Sphinx, you know, is kind of puffy in comparison when it comes to that suit. So I think this works well. And then he definitely still has some size, but he's not towering over the Rangers. So he looks menacing, but he isn't super, super big. And let's do some other lines. Let's do a figure arts. Here is Piccolo from Dragon Ball Super. That's our superhero Piccolo. Let's pull Goldar aside. Let's do a let's do a Masterverse figure. So that means Faker coming back out. And let's do one more. Let's do a let's do a Legion's figure because why not? Here is a skeleton just for a standard 1.0 style Legion's figure. So as you can see. This guy's pretty normal for an Ultimates figure. He's kind of puffy, he's kind of kind of bulky, but not super tall or anything. He does have the wings to help make him a little bit bigger. And then in general, I think he's going to work really well with just about anything you've got. 1 12th, 1 10th, and then again, in comparison to those other King Sphinx, this guy is where it's at. Now, as far as accessories goes, King Sphinx has a decent amount. It's not a ton. Like, there's plenty of Ultimates that are going to have more accessories than this guy. But he has basically everything you can really give him. He doesn't really have, you know, an arsenal or anything out there. So to start with, we do get an extra head sculpt. This is just one where he's like sort of angry. He's got kind of like a, a growl going of sorts. So you get a furrowed brow. You get a little bit of a different portrait there. And then the mouth is more open. I kind of like this one better. And it's going to work nice for, you know, battle scenes and stuff like that. We do get some extra hands. So he has fists on him in the box. You get two sets of gripping hands. So you get a lateral set and a vertical set. So that's four. You get a left pointing finger hand, which I always like these. I've really grown to, to enjoy getting hands for figures that will just let them point at something because that's dumb and I like it. And then you get a right sort of grasping, gesturing kind of hand to round them out. So he gets eight total hands. And then he gets the uh, the Sphinx staff, which is a fairly plain weapon by, by all considerations, but it looks good here. It's got the yellow and the blue and the red for like the little tassels. Nothing to really write home about, but this this rounds him out as a character. The only other thing I would have liked to have seen is the one thing that the Lightning Collection did better, and that's to give him an energy effect. You can use that effect on this weapon. It'll work just fine, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, but I would have liked to have seen that just to give him some sort of a blast. But I'm usually going to say that if a figure is missing it anyway. Not the end of the world, but something that could have been used to beef him up. Otherwise, especially with the inclusion of the wings making that, you know, an extra bigger part of the figure, he does have a pretty decent spread. So overall, I think I said it like, what, within the first five seconds of this video, this might be my favorite Ultimates of the year, just in general, you know, across the board, as far as figures go. There's other stuff that I maybe like better because of character selection. You know, King Sphinx isn't anything that's necessarily near and dear to my heart, but this is a damn, damn good figure. They did such a good job on every aspect of this guy, from articulation to sculpt to paint to accessories. You know, I did say I would have maybe liked to have seen an energy effect with this guy for his for his weapon, but that's not a huge deal in this line. I think they did a great job from top to bottom. He's big, he's chunky, he looks so much like the show. He's going to look really good with Goldar. He's going to look great alongside the Rangers, and I'm really happy to see this particular figure. It gives me it gives me great enthusiasm for what other monster figures down the road could look like. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimates MMPR King Sphinx. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.